So this was a post that we put up in August. Um, and as you can see, it's the iOS volume interaction that you see in the control center. And the thing that really caught our eye here was the way that the volume uh, icon animates. So rather than it being a linear transition from low volume to full volume, it actually moves uh, in stages. So as you can see, if we drag here, it's moved. But at this point, nothing's changing about it. And likewise here, we can see there's no movement here. And then it changes again. So you can obviously hand animate this. But in order to, you know, it gets pretty difficult if this finger starts doing some slightly crazy things, you're having to sync all those things up. So rather than hand animate this, we've actually rigged this up to be controlled by the null and uh, by proxy the finger as well. So let's um, get in to show you how to set this up. Okay, so let's start by creating the, uh, the level, so the white um, box that was moving up and down in our example. To do that, to create a rectangle, let's just hold down Alt and we'll click on the rectangle tool here, and that will place a rectangle in the middle of our scene. Uh, we'll set some dimensions. I'm going to go with 206, 460. And we'll give this a color. Let's go with white and let's give it a name. I'm going to call this level. Okay, so the first thing to think about here is that in the example, we were controlling the height of this rectangle by adjusting the top of the, of the rectangle. Now, as you see, if we change our height here, as you can see, that's uh, animating out from the center, but we want that to happen from the bottom. And the way to do that is to set that up with a deformer called a line, and we can create, uh, we create that by using the plus sign here, searching for a line, and we'll just click that. And then we can pop open that uh, it's actually editor UI here. As you can see, we can now move this. That would be from the top, and this is from the bottom. And now if we change the height, you can see that that's animating up and down from there. Okay, so we need to reposition this now. And literally all we need to do is half the value of, of its height, which was 460. So we're gonna go down by minus 230. And now that's in place. Okay, so for the background, we need another rectangle. So same again, Alt-click. I'm going to use the same values. And let's just drop that behind the level. Again, let's give this a color, a little bit darker. And let's call this uh, lozenge. Okay, if I just turn the level off. So we obviously want the corner rounding here. We have a attribute called corner radius. We can just scrub that. I'm going to use a guy called of court of 55. And if we turn the level back on, you can now see that as we go up and down, this is starting to work. But what's apparent here is that we need to be uh, we need to be clipping the level shape with the lozenge shape. The way to do that, the quick way to do that is to pick up the connection here on the lozenge, drag and release on the level, and then connect to a new mask. And as you can see, we're now masked there. By default, whenever you make a connection to a mask, the, the shape that you're using, will its visibility will be turned off. Uh, you don't have to use it like that, so let's turn that back on. And now we have that in place. So the next thing we want to do was use this um, user null to control this. A few ways you can add null. One is to click here, or you can hit Command, Control, and period, or full stop, and create a null. Or the shortcut is Shift, Command, or Control, and equals. So now we need to make sure that the position of the null, in this case, we've got a position of Y. Uh, if we just move our height to also 230 here, 230 there. As you can see, we now need to um, translate our value of zero to the null to 230 on the uh, level. Now, you could set up some hierarchies to do this. Um, I actually chose to use a bit of math. So I'm going to add a math node. And now all we need to do is take the, if I just 
Alt double click here and then bring the math. Sorry, I wanted the null first and then the math. We want to take the position of the null and add that to the first on the maths. We want to add a value and we want to add a value of 230. Okay, so we can now take the output or the ID of the math node and connect that to the level and we're looking for height here. So obviously nothing's changed, but now as we move this null, that's now controlling the height of our uh, rectangle. Um, we can do a couple other things with nulls here just to help us out with the with the rigging. So I'm just going to alt double click so we've just got that in. Um, we can limit the position. So if I check this box, I'm just going to uncheck the, uh, the position limits that we're drawing there. As you can see, we've got some attributes here, minimum and maximum position. Now we know the minimum and maximum position because we know it's going to be from 230 and a maximum of 230. Now, as you'll see, as I move this up and down, even though my cursor is continuing, the null is limited at those two values. Now we've also got this lateral movement. That doesn't really matter, but if you did want to, to lock that out, you can just, if you just put two matching values in here, the next time we interact with this, it'll, it'll snap to that position. So now we've got a nice little controller there um, that we, we can't go wrong with, basically. Okay, so that's that bit. We'll move on to the next step. So the next thing to look at is the speaker um, icon itself. Um, uh, as you can see, we've done a tiny bit of tidy up here. We've just grouped our uh, level and lozenge underneath another folder so we, we can sort of turn that on and off if we need to. Um, the other thing you'll notice is we have this speaker cone. I've already brought this in. Um, just hitting F there to fill the viewport. Um, this is an editable shape that we've drawn in Cavalry. Uh, you can, of course, bring in uh, SVG or any artwork you like, really, in that respect. Um, so we've got that. The next thing we need to do, really, is create the uh, radiating lines that come out to indicate the volume. So the way to do that is we can create an ellipse. And again, I'm just going to Alt-click on the tool here. Now, we don't need the fill. So let's open the Fill tab, turn off the fill. But we do need a stroke. So let's just turn that on. I'm going to give this a stroke with the five. Um, now we can set a color, of course, but um, another little feature in Cavalry is the ability to uh, link one color to lots of different objects. And the way you can do that is in the color window, and you can use the scene palette here. The way to add a palette to the scene palette is to basically drag something out of your library. So I'm going to use this color here and drag that in. As you can see, the difference between these is that this has a, a connection icon. So we can pick that up and we can drag that onto the stroke color. And if we do the same thing with our speaker cone, that's the fill. We've actually got the same color already in here, but um, if we connect this up, and now whenever we change this color, uh, that updates across everything. So not essential for this project, but um, you know, a useful tip for other things you might be building. OK, so we don't want one uh, ellipse, we need three. So we're going to go to the good old duplicator to do that. And I'm just going to, with the ellipse selected, in fact, let's give this a name. Let's call this volume. So with our volume selected, um, let's alt click on the uh, duplicator icon up here in the shelf. Now, by default, that gives us a grid. We don't want a grid distribution. We want a point distribution. And now it looks like. We only have one, but the reason for that is that every ellipse is on top of the other one. So we do actually have three in there. OK, so the way to create um, the three different uh, radius ellipses is to add something, a behavior, to the radius on our ellipse itself. So here's our volume ellipse. Uh, various things you can add here. I'm just going to right click, add behavior. I chose a modulate. Again, if I, if I click here and then double click, I can load up the uh, UI. I'm going to swap mode to custom pattern. And then I'm just going to type in the values that I want. So I want one at 25, one at 50, and one at 75. And as you can see, they've now appeared. So the next thing we need to do is 
trim the paths on each one of these. So if we go over to the stroke tab on the volume and we can enable trim here and let's just drag these out to some values that look about right. Um, that's not bad actually, I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, the next little detail we can do here, as you can see, we've kind of got these square ends or square caps or flat caps. Uh, um, we can change that to round. And now that sort of feels a little bit more iOS there. And we can, let's just move our speaker cone ever so slightly so it feels in the right position. Let's go with something like that. And now just to tidy this up, let's uh, group all these things together. Uh, let's leave the null out of this group and we'll group all these together. So I'm just hitting Command or Control G and let's call this speaker. Okay, last step is uh, rigging this all up and we'll do that in the next stage. Okay, so we're about ready to rig this thing up now. We have our null that's moving um, our volume up and down. We have our speaker, which we can move from left to right. And we have our duplicator, which is allowing us to animate the uh, radiating rings to indicate the volume. What we need to do now is translate the value of the, the, the position Y value of the null. And we need to translate across this to the uh, position X value of the speaker itself. I'm just going to bump that back up to three again. So we could do this with a bit of maths, uh, but actually we've got a handy utility called number range in Cavalry. And what this allows us to do is to, is to remap values. The way it works is it will take an input, a value, and then it will say if that value's minimum is zero, or when that value is zero, output zero as the minimum output on the node itself. When the uh, input gets to 10, output a value of 100. So we need to use, as our value, we're looking to use our the position y on our null. So let's take position y and we'll connect that into the value here. Let's just close this out. Now we already know that our source minimum is minus 230 and the maximum is 230. So currently this is saying when this value equals 230 or minus 230, as you say, the node will output zero. When the value equals 230, the node will output 100. So we can just see how this is working by just connecting this up now. So if we take our ID connection from the number range, drop that onto the speaker here, and we're looking for position X. As you can see, that's doing something straight away. And as we move up and down, you can see that's having an effect. So that's great, but in actual fact, um, this is moving in, as, we, as the volume goes up, we actually need this icon to move to the left because we need to make room for these radiating rings to come out. So that's very easy. All we need to do is pop open the graph and we can just flip it. And that basically reverses the graph or inverts it. And now, as you can see, as we go down, we're moving to the right. And as we go up, we're moving to the left or getting to our zero value. To our minimum. So all we need to do now really is just adjust these minimum and maximum values till our icon lands in the right place. So let's just eyeball that into the middle, drag this down to the bottom, and we need to do exactly the same thing here. For this I'm just going to get the cone into the center because these rings will not be visible once we've uh, finished rigging this up. So now that's up and down it goes. So that's working nicely. What we haven't got though is that step effect that we talked about at the beginning. So the idea that as you drag down, there are moments where this nothing happens to this icon. So this is quite easy to set up. And again, we're going back to the graph to do this. The reason that movement is completely linear is because we have a line that all those values are traveling along. But we can actually play with this curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click and that will create a new uh, uh, point for us. I'm going to do the same thing again here. Now, I don't really want these Bezier points for this example, so I'm just going to Alt-click on each one and turn those into corner points. I'm just going to click on the grid snapping just to give you, just make it a bit easier to make this flat area here. So now what should happen 
is that as we move uh, up and down, we will have, at either ends we'll have this, the values will be changing. Values will then not change at all, and then they will start changing again. So let's just see what the effect that's had. So we're at the top, and something's moving. As you can see now, it stops moving. And then as we get to the bottom, it moves again. Now we actually need that in three stages, but we'll come back around to that. So we've done that, we, we can do exactly the same thing um, with the count on the duplicator. So I'm just gonna create another number range. Now this time, rather than using the, the value of the null itself and its minimum maximum values, in order to save me having to draw this graph twice, I'm actually gonna pump the values from this number range into this number range, and then we'll do another remap through this number range. So let's do that. So let's take the output of our number range and we'll use that as the value here. And then we're gonna use the minimum that we set here. We're gonna connect that to the source minimum of that one and the maximum to the source maximum here. Okay, now for our outputs, a minimum of zero will give us no rings. We need that, but we don't need 100 rings. We only need three, so we're gonna use three there. And then we just need to connect our number range, uh, the output, sorry, to the count on our duplicator. So now as we go up and down, this should work. <laughs> Again, we our graph needs to be flipped on this one. So now you can see that's working nicely. As you can see, the, the reason we've, because we've gone through and, and effectively this graph is being used now, it's being passed through these values as well. We've already got nothing happening with the count, nothing happening with the count, and then it happens again at the end, okay? So all that's left to do now really is just to adjust, is to create some more stops in here. So let's just again double click and just alt click, double click. If you hold alt at the same time, it will uh, do it for you. Now let's just create some fairly good flat values. Again, you might want to do all this numerically. You can you can select these uh, and actually add some numeric values, but this, this hopefully will do for this tutorial. So now as we come down, we've got three at the top and it changes and then it holds and then it changes again and then it holds and then it changes again. So there you go, that's the setup. We obviously took this a little bit further um, in our example. We had the mute symbol as well. That was exactly the same, again, using a number range. Um, in that one, it was controlling the trim on just a simple line and, and the stroke of that line. Uh, but exactly the same theory, you can just keep, keep passing that on. Anyway, hope that's been helpful and um, enjoy.